This conversation is really important for every single person because it's something that every single person deals with. We are going to talk about mental health. Whatever game you're in, whether you wear a jersey, khakis, a uniform, your own brand, it is more than just the skills that you bring to that game. It is also about the mental approach. That's what can account for the difference in a day or even in a moment. But that processing does not come without cost. I have interviewed so many athletes in my career, and what I can tell you is the difference between the good ones and the great ones is those that know how to balance that mental aspect of the game. So we're here today to talk about that process, the recovery, how to tap back in, and even know when it's time to tap back out. So it's gonna be a really, really enlightening conversation for you guys today. And I'm very excited to introduce a legend, a phenomenal person, a Hall of Famer, Coming out to the stage is Mr. Allen Iverson. <laughs> In the flesh. What is up, AI? So good to see you again. Uh, I've been excited for this for so long just because you, as we all know, he is one of the realest to ever be on the court. And it's not just on the court. Your conversations are the realest, too. So I just want to start really by asking, in your playing days, could you have ever envisioned being on a stage talking about something like mental health? Not really. Yeah. Not really. Um, but in that profession, it's very important. Well, any profession. In life, period, it's yeah. important. Yeah. When did you realize the importance of mental health? Just, um, I think probably in every aspect of my life, but more so, um, you know, being in a profession I was in um, and the expectations of, you know, being the number one pick, um, being the guy with the franchise on his back, um, and just with the, with the, Basically, being scrutinized and um, being judged, you know what I mean? So it, it, it started early, you know, because I was always, you know, in, in sports, I was always that guy, that, you know, and I was always the guy that everybody pointed the finger at. So I had to deal with it, and I was well prepared, you know, being from where I come from, um, I was prepared for all the challenges. Yeah. So, I mean, number one pick, expectations, so many different things, you know, went into your NBA career. When it was done, do you feel like you were more exhausted physically or mentally? Mentally. Mentally. Mentally, okay. And, and I, was, <laughs> I was beat up too. You know what I mean? <laughs> but mentally, um, just like I said, with the expectations, um, just every uh, time I came out of the house, especially in Philadelphia, it was always an uproar. It was, it was um, rare that I could have any time to myself in the public. Um, it was it was it was rocky um at, at times, but I just, you know, believed in my faith. Um I, I felt like I was in a space that I wanted to be in my life mm -hmm. and my dreams had came true. And I was not gonna let anything on the outside um distract me from doing what I wanted to do career wise. But I mean what is it like kind of battling with knowing okay everything that you wanted to happen in your life happens. But then there's these expectations, there's all this noise, and there's things that, in essence, kind of weigh you down, and you're trying to balance all of that at once. I, I, I think it's um, when you kind of um, try to be perfect, you know what I mean? And I'm um, scared to make mistakes, you know? And my whole thing was, you're gonna turn it over, and you're gonna miss shots, but Obviously, you can't make a play if you're thinking about a turnover, and you'll never be able to make a shot if you don't take it. You know what I mean? So um, I, I just try not to be um, hard on myself when I had, you know, other people criticizing me and the critics out there doing it. So um, I didn't want to do it to myself and, and add more weight on it. Yeah. So you're going to turn it over. You're going to miss shots. I feel like that is a motto for all walks of life. There's going to be some trips. You're going to fail, but you learn from those and you get Absolutely. better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I wouldn't want a perfect life at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no such thing. You know what I'm saying? I fail plenty of times, but I get back up. You know what I mean? And that's on and off the court. Mm -hmm. So one thing about mental health, you know, something that is always, I think, brought up is about loving yourself, right? And self-love and this journey to that. 
Did you have to have a journey to loving yourself? No, nah, I always, I always um, was, I've always been comfortable with my own skin. Um, I understand that I'm human, I'm gonna make mistakes. Um, I just try not to make them twice. And I love being myself, you know what I mean? Why not? Everybody else taking up, mm. you know what I mean? So what's wrong with you? You know, what's, what's, what's wrong with who you are and who God created? You know what I mean? I think that's kind of a disrespect to him, you know, wanting to be somebody else. You know, uh, you might want to get to the same level um, as someone as far as going to the NBA or something, but I want to make my mark as Allen Iverson. I want, the, you know, people to say, you know, um, the next guy, you know, I'm, I don't want to be the next, you know, Michael Jordan or the next Magic Johnson. I want to be the only Allen Iverson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. And I think for somebody like you, I just wonder how often you really are able to sit back and see the impact that you've had on not just players, but everybody. Like, you know, we hear these things a lot, but the soaking it in is not something, you know, I don't know if you've really soaked it in. Have you? <laughs> Ask the question again. Have you soaked that in, the impact that I you mean, had? It's, it's, it's a, it's like a, um, it's an honor. You know what I mean? It's a, it's an honor and it's, um, I think it's, I think it's love mm -hmm. that, people from all walks of life, yeah. you know, respect me and respect, you know, what I've done in my life and in my career, um, my trials and tribulations, my ups and my downs, and, you know, just to be able to get off the plane, uh, off the plane in any country in the world and you recognize, yeah. um, and just to have so many loyal fans, you know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's a blessing, man. It's, it's really, truly a blessing how people treat me, um, and tell me about how I impacted their lives, you know, on, on whatever level, you know what I mean? Uh, and I'm not just talking about basketball players, you know, I'm talking about everyday working people, you know what I mean? Um, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful fe feeling. And without my fans, I mean, there's no Allen Iverson. Yeah. You know what I mean? Your fans, your fans are everything. And then when I see the response that they have for me, it make me feel good about the way I was raised, make me feel good about you know, obviously my mom, my dad, but all of the family members, the friends that helped me along the way, because you don't get here by yourself. You know what I mean? So many other people help you, whether it's your fans, your, your parents, your homeboys, your homegirls, everybody, you know what I mean? And that's why when, when I made my Hall of Fame speech, you know, I, I really felt like telling them now they were Hall of Famers. All of those people that supported me throughout the years, they became Hall of Famers that day. I mean, one of the best Hall of Fame speeches, I assume most people in here have seen his Hall of Fame speech. It was, it was amazing, and right? It was just incredibly emotional, and... Yeah, except, the, except for the crying. Yeah, there was definitely some crying. I'm an emotional dude. Like, I, you know, yeah. I talk about people that I love, and, you know, I, I really appreciate the people that, that love me back. And I'm not yeah. talking about AI, you know what I mean? I'm talking about, you know, Chuck from Hampton and Newport News that really love who I am, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. before all of this. Yeah. You know, I, I just love and respect those people for helping me. And my whole thing was, you know, they would, they could never, I would never look in the mirror and see somebody that they didn't know and recognize. You know what I mean? I always wanted to stay grounded and stay true to all of the people that stayed true to me mm -hmm. on my journey. So when you were talking about how you brought them up in the speech and you just joked about how you were crying in the speech, have you always felt comfortable being emotional and crying? I'm a man. Everything about me. I'm a man all the way through, from top to bottom. I'm a man. So I don't have, a, I don't have no problem with the way I feel. I hurt just like anybody else. I cry just like anybody else. Um, I want to live, laugh, and love every day. You know what I mean? I love, you know... Me and my guys talk all day <laughs> and, you know, being us and making each other laugh. Like, I'm just like everybody else here. I think I'm probably the most approachable yes. celebrity mm -hmm. there is. I and I want to be like that. I, want, yeah. I, I love that about me. I, I love that people feel like that, that I am just like them and I am approachable because I am.